Hey everyone, this is Dave here with a look at Recall on both Xbox One and the PC. So out of all the games that were coming to Xbox One, this was the game that piqued my interest. Produced by Kenji Mifuni, in combination with both Concept and Armature Studios, backed by development staff that had a hand in creating both Mega Man and Metroid Prime. What we have here is a pretty cool third person action title yep, with a good sense of adventure, there's plenty of exploration and of course the lead character has a fair few abilities of her own. For example the charge beam closely resembles the one that of Metroid as does the game's targeting system. Also the core bots, these kind of robotic animals that help you out, also serve to give you other abilities as well. Overall the game is heavily influenced by both Mega Man and especially Metroid Prime and this can definitely be seen in terms of the actual visual design as well. The environments here are largely beautiful with accomplished lighting and some very well done surface shaders and effects work. In fact the visual aspect is what really stood out for me when I first picked out this particular title. For one this is a game that's using Unity and most Unity titles out there aren't that impressive. But not Recall, combined with a solid soundtrack and decent voice acting, the game doesn't take long to really get you immersed in the experience. But that said, how well does it hold up across both platforms? So far we've been showing you the PC version, but the game was primarily developed around Xbox One and optimised for that particular system. Well, as to be expected, the Xbox One version does feature a few downgrades over the PC game, but on first impressions they do look pretty similar. There are some differences though. Take image quality for example, on Xbox One we're looking at a native resolution of 900p backed up with post-process anti-aliasing which looks pretty close to the FXAA option on the PC. In comparison we've got the PC version running in 1080p here and that produces a sharper image all round and on top of that we're using 16x temporal anti-aliasing. Essentially this provides smoother image quality over the Xbox One version, reducing jaggies and subpixel artifacts across the scene. Now neither version is perfect in this regard, and subpixel shimmer and shader aliasing can still be seen across dual and certain parts of the environment. Texture detail is another area where the PC version takes point, with less in the way of low resolution assets on screen. The Xbox One version uses a combination of medium and high, and assets that fall somewhere in between the two. Whereas on PC, the very high preset gives us a tangible improvement in terms of detail. What's interesting here is despite the texture upgrade, the PC version still features quite a few low resolution assets, which tend to appear quite blurry up close. It's not so noticeable during gameplay, but it definitely sticks out during some of the cutscenes. Beyond that, shadow quality is also given a small boost, but in all honesty, it's kind of difficult to see during play. Essentially, we see shadow edges appearing slightly smoother on the PC. The console versions are roughly running at high settings here, up against very high on the PC version. But ultimately neither setting is able to get rid of some of the noticeable stair-stepping artifacts, particularly around character shadows during cutscenes. Similarly there really isn't much difference in texture filtering, and looking over the footage it definitely seems like Xbox One is running with 16 times, exactly what we're using on PC here, so at least assets do appear clear at oblique angles. The PC version also includes additional alpha effects such as dust, particles and other weather based elements as well, which flesh out the scene and add a bit more detail to the environments. So these are the main areas where we see a difference between Xbox One and PC, but there's one particular effect that we haven't seen so far, and that's motion blur. By default motion blur is turned off on the PC, and after sampling some of the implementations available, I decided to keep it that way. Now if you want to give the game a slightly more filmic look, then there are several versions of motion blur available to toggle, ranging from a basic camera based effect to other more advanced implementations. Overall I personally found that the local blur version produced the least amount of artifacts, and if I wanted to add motion blur this was the setting I'd choose. And it's definitely something worth considering if you're going to be running the game at 30 frames per second, since the motion blur actually blends together frames quite nicely and helps deliver smoother lateral movement. However, if you can run the game at 60 frames per second, then motion blur isn't necessarily needed. So before we move on to performance, there is one last thing we have to cover, and that's loading times. 
I played the game first on Xbox One, and this is one particular issue that continued to bug me throughout the experience. Now the game doesn't have to load that often, but for example whenever you're moving between different environments, you can spend a lot of time waiting. Generally you have to wait for around a minute or so when moving between different areas. And in addition to that, every time you die, you're also greeted with a nice lengthy loading screen. And it can be frustrating, especially during boss battles, which can be a bit trial and error at times. This is definitely one aspect of the Xbox One version I'd like to see improved in a future update. Even if they can't quite cut those loading times down by half, it would be nice if they're a bit quicker. Now on the PC this isn't really an issue, loading times are cut down by over half, so if something takes 58 seconds on Xbox One, you can expect the same scene to load in with around 17 seconds on PC. And on top of that there is minimal waiting after you die, so the experience seems a lot more seamless as a result. So in terms of performance PC can run at higher frame rates, but with Xbox One we're looking at a 30 FPS cap here. This automatically leads to an experience that isn't quite as smooth as on the PC, but as long as the frame rate stays consistent, the experience can be very playable indeed. In fact, during the first few hours of the game, there are plenty of times when the frame rate stays locked at 30 FPS, with very little in the way of dips throughout. That said, once we get into more demanding scenes, particularly shootouts with plenty of enemies and the usual suspects, alpha effects, then frame rates get hit much harder, and this is one area of the game that disappoints. Indeed, when the engine is heavily stressed, then we can see frame rates drop down to the low 20s. Now, controller response isn't so much the issue here. The game features a lock-on targeting system, so we don't really have to worry about lining up shots. However, lateral movement appears jerky, combat just doesn't feel quite as fluid and smooth as it should do. That said, I still found the game very playable overall, and although performance really could be better, it's not a complete deal breaker, and combat still comes across as pretty exciting, just not quite as polished as it perhaps could be. That being said, you could argue that a third person action game like this should really be running at a higher frame rate. In fact, one of the things that made Metroid Prime such a joy to play was that it was running at 60 frames per second. Now it's possible to achieve a similar experience with ReCore, but this requires the PC version, and some fine tuning of settings. Here we've got the game running on a Skylake i5 paired with both a GTX 1060 and with the Radeon RX 480, cards that are likely to be popular choices with enthusiast gamers that don't have the budget to go fully high end. In this case we were able to target 60 FPS, once we'd lowered graphical settings down to something more in line with the Xbox One version. Of course we're still pushing for some improvement, so resolution is set to 1080p, and we've also got textures set at very high as well, basically maximum. On top of that we're running with 4x10 Pro anti-aliasing as well. For the most part, both cards do hand in a solid 60 FPS. However, the GTX 1060 can't quite give us a complete lock, and we do see some small frame rate drops during combat. Whereas on the other hand, the RX 480 never misses a beat. Anyway, whichever card you have, it's still possible to hit 60 FPS without needing uber high end hardware, and in all honesty, dropping a few settings such as shadows, ambient occlusion, doesn't actually spoil the look of the game. Overall, I really enjoyed ReCore, the Metroid style gameplay, and the beautiful aesthetics with the visuals. Something I simply didn't expect from a Unity Engine game. ReCore definitely looks like a big budget AAA title. It's not a perfect game by any means, and performance could be improved on Xbox One. But overall, it's a decent looking title that has several captivating elements to it. Anyway, that's it for now. If you enjoyed our analysis, don't forget to give us a like, and remember to subscribe if you'd like to support Digital Foundry. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Stay alert, Mac. The core bots in this sector look corrupted too.